Okay, this is a demo for my students since this did not go very well in class today. But as you can see, we have the battery here and the voltmeter. It's hooked up, uh, negative end of the voltmeter is hooked up to the negative terminal, positive end of the voltmeter is hooked up to the battery. So you can see the battery has a voltage of 6.18 volts. So now if I disconnect the voltmeter from the battery, and now we have our circuit. We have the first capacitor, which is in series with the other two. So if you see, we have this line running to this capacitor, and these two capacitors are in parallel now because they have a, a common positive end and a common negative end. The green is the negative, the yellow is the positive, and then the negative end of this guy is going to go into the negative of the batteries. So if I go ahead and I stick this in there now, now everything is hooked up and if I start probing the voltages across each capacitor we will see uh, exactly what we should have predicted in class. So right now I have the uh, multimeter hooked up with the positive end to the small capacitor and the negative end to its negative terminal, this right here, and you can see we're reading 4.82. I've now switched the multimeter so that the positive end is in the positive end of this capacitor, negative end of this capacitor and the negative end of the multimeter. We're reading 1.35 and we know from theory since these two are in parallel the voltages should be the same. Let me just go ahead and switch that now. You see that indeed we do still get 1.35 volts. The last thing I wanted to show is what happens after we disconnect the battery. So I'm going to pull these terminals out. Battery's disconnected now, but you see the capacitor still has the large one now. Still has a voltage of 1.35 across it. This is because it is storing the electrical energy. And I'll go ahead and I'll disconnect this from all the other guys just so you can see that it isolated still has the same voltage. So now this capacitor is completely isolated. I'm simply measuring the voltage across it. That's the only two leads that are attached. They come down to the multimeter. It still reads uh, 1.35. Now if I take a spare wire and I bridge the positive and negative end, this is probably going to produce a spark now because this is a large capacitor. Yeah, maybe not. No spark. You see the voltage now dropped down to zero. And I'll go ahead, I'll charge this one more time and do a wide shot so you can see both happen. This time I've charged the capacitor just straight to the battery, so this capacitor is getting the full 1.8 volts from the battery. Uh, now if I disconnect the battery, once again, the capacitor still maintains most of the voltage. It's actually probably bleeding through the negative end. Um, so it's almost constant. You can see it's starting to drop down, probably because it's dissipating into the air. But if I try and pull back, maybe I'll move this closer. And if you watch now, I'll do, I'll discharge this capacitor, and you'll see the voltage drastically drop. Watch as these two make contact. See the voltage drops down to zero because I'm now discharging the capacitor. And when I take it away, it should still be roughly zero. There might be a little bit of residual charge, but it should stay at zero because there's no longer any energy stored in the capacitor.